Hello everyone at Verbling.com. Welcome to another English class brought to you by Verbling.com. Verbling.com is where you can connect and practice with a native speaker instantly. My name is Jeff Watson. I am originally from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada but I am speaking to you from South America. I currently live and work in the country Chile in their big capital city Santiago. And so uh, this hour we are going to be doing some reading and the focus as always the focus will be to read the article and to understand the information that is contained in the article and then to share and discuss your ideas and opinions about the information that is in the article. I have, uh, I can see in the chat box that people have already downloaded the document that we are going to be reading. It's called file GW38. Let's see if the chat box is working. File GW38. Yes, it's working. Great. And so um, what I would like to do is to ask people to introduce themselves. And the question I would like to ask is, do you like seafood? Do you like eating seafood? which is fish or shellfish and how often do you eat seafood what do you buy and is it expensive yeah and uh, Fong Ho are you there Fong Ho are you there Fong Ho you need to keep your microphone muted. Let's see if... Uh, no. Fong Ho, are you there? Please turn off your microphone. Fong Ho, are you there? Please turn off your microphone. And uh, for the other people, uh, we're hearing some echo. So what people need to do is if they can please close the verbling window. You're in the Google Hangout. So, uh, Joan, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I'm sorry, but uh, two things, please. During the class, please keep your microphone muted or silenced. And it's very important for students to use headphones or earphones to avoid an echo. And okay. Thank you. Great. So let's uh, start by saying hello to uh, Bir Bir Noy. Hello. Are you there? Fong Ho. Fong Ho, are you there? Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to uh, eject you from the class. I'm very sorry. Okay, so uh, Bear Noy, are you there? Okay, we, we don't hear from you. And so I'd like to go to Diego. Hello, Diego. Welcome. Hello, Jeff. Please introduce Hi. yourself and... Do you like seafood? Hi, my name is Diego. I'm from Spain, from Salamanca. Um, yes, I like seafood. I like it so much. My father um, sells seafood. Ah, really? So I eat um, good seafood. <laughs> yeah, the best. Good quality. Uh, and uh, <laughs> yes. is how much of it is uh, live or wild caught or harvested from the ocean 
and how much of it is has been farmed? Hmm. Really, I don't know. Okay. All right. And and what types of seafood do you uh, like to buy and eat? Uh, tuna. Mm -hmm. okay. Salmon. And oof, I don't know the names in English. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, that's fine. So uh, we'll actually have to have students do some uh, googling of of the uh, of the names that you know. But yeah, yeah. salmon, tuna, and uh, other seafood. Shims? Sorry. Shims. I don't uh, know. Who clams. Yeah, you maybe you can put it in the uh, maybe you can put it in the um, the chat box for us. Great. I, I'm going to move on to Imad. Imad, hello, welcome. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you yeah. very much. I'm Imad. I'm from Syria. And about seafood, I like seafood, only fishes, as long as it doesn't contain a lot of thorns, because I think thorns is very annoying for me. But uh, uh, I really bones? like it. Lots thorns. of bones? Thorns. Thorns, yeah. Thorns. T H O R N. Oh, okay. Now, thorns. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, but yeah. what, what do you mean by that? Some fish that have spikes or thorns yeah, on them? Yeah, spikes. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, great. If, uh, if it contains a lot of uh, these spikes or thorns, I will never eat it at all. But I usually like it. Like cups and cups. Yeah, okay. And do you know where the seafood comes from? And... Also, is it wild seafood from the ocean, or has it been farmed? Uh, I think because we are not living in the, in the coastal side, my country is way away from the sea. Don't have that experience, but most of the cases we have it from farms or kind of frozen uh, fishes, not fresh one. Yes. Okay. So frozen seafood. Yeah. Which which can be very good quality. So yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd like thank to you. go on to Emmanuel. Hello. Hello, teacher. <laughs> Please call me Jeff. Uh, hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. <laughs> uh, so my name is Emmanuel. Uh, I'm from Congo. About uh, seafood. Yeah, I like seafood and. Uh, in my country, we have a fish, a kind of fish called uh, tromson. So it's very tasty and uh, good for us. And now, is this from the ocean or uh, from fresh water? No, it's from the ocean because a part of my country is just uh, nearby the, the, the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. And uh, and then this is being fished by local people. Yeah, yeah. The these fishes are fished by local people. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. And I'm going to go on to Ismail. Hello, Ismail. How are you? Fine. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Ismail from Turkey. I do like uh, seafood very much, Jeff. I grew up in a, a small fisher village. Uh, my village was an, a, a half island in the lake. And okay. uh, when I was swim in the lake, I was catching some uh, crayfish okay. and okay, good. With uh, my friends, we are we were uh, boiling them in a uh, cap, and we were eating them uh, all together. But uh, the pollution uh, died out. All the uh, crayfish uh, we couldn't find any crayfish now in the lake, and. Mm -hmm. I am living now in a big city and uh, I try to eat uh, 
one or two times uh, in the weeks, but my wife uh, don't like seafood. She uh, she doesn't. She, she doesn't, doesn't like. like. Yeah. Okay. The so smell of. Uh, she doesn't ah. like the uh, <laughs> smell of the seafood. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That can be strong when you're boiling it. So yes. I put in the chat box. Um, uh, we used to boil them in a pot, and the term that we use in English is that unfortunately the pollution killed off, killed off the crayfish. Yeah, that's, yes. that's too bad. All right, and Johnny, hello, welcome. Johnny, are you there? Okay, we, we don't hear you, Johnny, so I'm going to go on to Juan. Hello, Juan. Hi, Jeff. Uh, I am from Barcelona. And, and here we really like uh, seafood. Uh, nowadays, the, the most amount of seafood is produced in, in farms, in sea, in sea farms. Uh, uh, seafood, wild, wild seafood is, is, is better. But uh, uh, but um, the most quantity of, of seafood is, uh, is is produced in a, in a farm. Right, right. Now uh, and and so what what type of seafood do you like to buy specifically? Uh, all, all all seafood, uh, shrimps, uh, cod, okay. salmon, uh, and a lot of seafood. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I don't know his his names in English. Okay. Uh, their, their name. We have uh, uh, a, a lot of, of kind of seafood. Okay. No, great. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, Julissa, hello. Hi. Yeah. Nice to be in your class again. Hello, well, everybody. You. Nice to have you here. I'm Julissa from Peru. And I think this is a coincidence because the last week I, I traveled to visit my grandparents. And then we went to, for the first time, we went to a place where they prepare shrimps and they raise the shrimps in, in this place. So I had the chance to see some seafood animals and, and they raise them there. That's, that's the correct verb, yeah, to raise them, yeah. And yes. just in English, shrimp is irregular, so we have one shrimp or two shrimp. It doesn't matter. One, two, oh, okay. It, it's, it's usually just referred to as... Um, uh, shrimp. So you would say there are four shrimp uh, on the plate. We can use it use it as plural shrimps. Yes. Well, no, what no s no. though. Not not uh, usually. Yeah. Okay. So Thanks. you you saw how the shrimp were being raised. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we couldn't see them, but they they are in some pools. But we could try them. They were very delicious. Yes. Okay. Great. Excellent. And then I'd like to say hello to Marie. Hello, Marie. Hello, are you there? Marie? Yes, my ah, mic good. was mute. No, that's fine. Thank you. Please. Yeah, Marie. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, we talk about seafood. Yes. Uh, what do I do have you, to say? Yeah. Do you like seafood? And uh, if so, how many times a week do you buy it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do like seafood, but I prefer it when it's cooked. Uh, because some people prefer it to uh, raw. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it, um, I don't know, it's going. Uh, how to say? I, I don't know. It's okay. It's all. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So you you prefer cooked seafood? I, I think most people prefer cooked seafood. And and yeah. and is it uh, is it expensive? Yeah, it's expensive in restaurants or in the market. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Great. And hello, Fong Ho. Hello. Welcome. Are you there? Okay, we, we don't hear you, Fung Ho, but hopefully you have your microphone working. 
And and somebody has uh, Diego has asked me uh, the about the pronunciation of shrimp with the S H uh, R shrimp shrimp. All right. So great. And uh, I'd like to. I think that's everybody. Uh, Johnny, are you there? Johnny. Okay. So uh, we don't hear from you, Johnny. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is to. Uh, open up the screen share and let's start reading our article uh, this comes from Public Broadcasting Corporation website PBS and so uh, let's let's start uh, doing some reading and some discussing uh, of the ideas and so here we go okay and Feng Ho are you there Uh, we we really cannot hear you. Your volume is very low. Phone hole. Oh, okay. Now, uh, thank you, but we cannot hear you. See if you can improve your internet connection or your microphone. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sorry. We really cannot hear you. I, I'm sorry. Please uh, try to improve your sound, your microphone connection. Okay, so uh, here we go. So then, Diego, could you please read uh, the title and uh, the first part of our text? <clears throat> yes. Is aquaculture really the hope for restoring our oceans? Overfishing, an ever increasing demand for seafood, combined with technical advances that now power the international fishing fleet, have precipitated. Somebody is reading? Yes, we uh, have somebody reading. Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, fine, please uh, go ahead, Diego. <laughs> sorry. Have pre precipitated a global marine fisheries crisis. Fish populations. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that test has disappeared. Oh, okay. Now I'm I'm moving. Now I would like everyone to know that you can download the um, you can download the file that we are going to be reading from the verbling.com website. If you go to the live classes page and look for uh, file GW38 uh, then you will have the reading on on your computer okay and so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, uh, go to Ahmad hello yeah. Yeah. Yes. Could, could you please uh, uh, read this uh, first part for us again okay an ever-increasing demand of seafood combined, combined with technical advances that now power the international fishing fleet uh, have uh, pres uh, uh, pres precipitated, precipitated a, glo a global marine fish, uh, uh, fisheries cr uh, crisis. Fish populations uh, can't, cannot, uh, cannot Reproduce fast enough to keep uh, pace with the fishing effort. Okay, uh, sure. great. Thank you. And and so uh, to to keep pace is to uh, to continue at the same speed. <clears throat> Maybe some other people have a, a good example. Precipitated in this context really just means caused. Uh, they have caused a global marine, marine fisheries crisis. And I have a, a picture here of one of the huge fishing boats that is capable of catching just enormous quantities of, of seafood. And they fish the world's oceans internationally. All right, so thank you. 
And so I think most people are aware of the fact that there is a fishing fisheries crisis. Uh, Emmanuel, could you read this next portion of text for us, please? Uh, okay. The results of a long-term study conducted by a team of marine scientists recently concluded that 90% of the large fish species in the world's oceans have been fished out in the last 50 years. Most the world's primary fisheries are either fully exploited or deple depleted. Farming the seas examines the problems, progress and potential of the global aquaculture industry, considered by many to be one of the best hopes for making up the shortfall. Okay, great. And so we have some uh, some terms here. Sorry, uh, I'm just going to move go to the document. So then, a shortfall is a lack of something, a shortage. There is not enough of something. Okay, and so you can say that really, um, you know, we're we're reaching a point where 90% of the large fish species. Uh, have been fished out. Now, this does not mean that they have been driven to extinction, but just that the populations can no longer be fished. Uh, there are not enough large fish for people to catch. It does not provide food. Uh, the populations are too small. Okay, so uh, any other questions? Right? So, is aquaculture or sea farming the answer? Right? So, let's go on to Ismail. Could you read this paragraph for us, please, Ismail? Yes, Jeff. The hope for aquaculture. Fish farming has become the fastest growing food production industry in the world and several approaches are being developed, some of which are generating consider considerable controversy and debate. Too many scientists, it seems the industry is going into almost opposite directions. Some operations raise carnivorous fish Species of fish that require fish flesh and fish oil in their diets, and others raise herbivorous species that require mostly plant-based feeds. Okay. Excellent, great job. Just uh, carnivorous is the is the pronunciation, and uh, herbivorous. You did a great job on that one. All right, and so in terms of species of fish or seafood, not necessarily fish that swim, but shrimp for example, uh, they either need uh, fish flesh, which is meat, or oil, so feed that comes from animal sources versus other species where the feed, which is what we say food for, for animals, the feed comes from plant sources. And just fish farming has become and then developed a T sound at the end. Developed. Okay? Yeah. So, great. Um, now let's move on. So we have the two sides, the two directions that the industry is going. All right. Uh, Johnny, are you there? Okay, I'm, I'm going to move on to Juan. Could you read this next selection for us, please? Yes, yes. Okay, I, I, I am. Uh, I, I read. Uh, the second broad category also includes farms raising shellfish. The field of feeding mollusks and bivalves uh, that obtain their nutrients from seawater. Part of the intense debate over aquaculture 
center around the main volumes of fish that need to be uh, uh, caught in the ocean in order to feed carnivorous species like salmon. Okay, great. And Joan, could you please close the verbling.com window? Right, right now you're in the Google Hangout window. But could you please close the verbling.com window or go to that window and turn off the broadcast of this classroom? You, you have an echo happening in the background. Uh, do you understand? So I in the verbling... I, I, I yeah. close the microphone, no? No, no. In, in the verbling.com window you on your web browser, please go in and turn off the classroom. The transmission of the classroom. On your web browser. That will eliminate the echo that we hear in the background. The transmission of the classroom. That's an echo that we're hearing. Eliminate the echo that we hear in the background. Okay, so uh, I'm going to move on, Juan. And, and so uh, uh, just to uh, cover the, um, some of the pronunciation, and so really we're, if we're talking about mollusks, these are uh, shellfish, we, we call that. So mollusks and bivalves, these are just referred to as shellfish. And, oh, sorry, Joanne, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to ask you to keep your microphone uh, muted until you okay, can eliminate. Okay. No, but please eliminate the echo in the background. Okay, I, I mute the microphone. Oh, the only window you need to keep open is the Google Hangout window. And, and so uh, there we go. So uh, shellfish and uh, so great. And part of the controversy, uh, controversy is that in order to farm fish that eat meat, carnivorous species like salmon, you need to catch the, uh, large volumes of fish from the ocean to feed the farmed fish. So that obviously has a huge impact. Uh, Julissa, could you please um, go on to the next uh, section here? Yes. Fish meal in aquaculture. What are the risks involved with catching fish to feed other fish? Most farm raised Carnivorous fish, inclu including salmon and shrimp, are fed formulated feed pellets comprised of grain, fish meal, and fish oil. Many marine scientists are concerned about the in immense volumes of wild ocean fish, fish that must be caught to feed these farmed animals, a fact that also involves food safety issues for consumers. Okay, great. So then, um, here we go. Now we're talking about farm-raised fish. That's a good term to use. Then we also just say farmed fish. And as opposed to wild ocean fish, which is, these are uh, wild animals in the ocean, okay, using fish meal, which is... Uh, the bodies of the fish um, ground up into a paste. Okay, and so this is the controversy that we have farmed fish, but they are eating huge amounts of wild ocean fish. And so that has a negative, com um, that has a negative uh, impact on the ocean. And so I'd like to go to Marie. Hello, Marie. Yes, yes. Yeah. Could you read the next paragraph, please? Okay. Fish meal in aquacultural culture case study. Most fish meal and fish oil is manufactured, manufactured from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. anchovies. Anchovies, sardines, capelin, and sand eels, and some of the fisheries that target these species are considered to be well managed. 
Managed. Managed. But not all fish meal is sourced this way. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And we have the verb to source. So this means it is uh, collected or obtained or gathered. Okay, so uh, let's, let's move on. And, and I think we'll go back and review some of these ideas uh, a little bit uh, in a little bit a little bit later. And so we have uh, Werdech. Are you there? Werdech. Yes. Yes. Did you welcome. Hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I'm I'm excited because it's the, my my first class now. <laughs> okay, excellent. Uh, uh -huh. Could you could you please read this next paragraph for us? Well, you know, is I'm from Thailand. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I will I will talk uh, thoroughly now. Okay, in Thailand, most shrimp farmers buy less expensive fish meal products from marine life captured by local bottom terrorists. Well, best best sell like that. Dang hairy net. Along the sea fraud, catching, catching rich, volumes after an untaken marriage life, and at times damaging froggy sea fraud habitat. Okay, let me help you with uh, the uh, pronunciation here. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, let's go back to uh, produced. Produced. Produced, yes. Trawlers. These are the fishing boats that have nets. It's called trawlers. Trawlers. Yeah. Like trawlers that trawlers. Pull, pull nets behind them. Vessels. Mm -hmm. Vessels. Fragile. 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 And habitats. Habitat. Okay. And so okay. they're talking about. Uh, getting fish meal by okay. dragging heavy nets along the seafloor and sometimes that damages the delicate or fragile seafloor habitats perhaps the the coral or rocks or plants where the fish live okay so that that could have a negative um, a negative uh, impact. So we have some shrimp. So shrimp are carnivores. So they require fish meal or fish oil in their feed. So farming shrimp has an impact. Okay. So great. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to move on uh, back to uh, Bernoy. Are you there? Okay. We, we still don't hear from you. And so, uh, Ahmad, are you there? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Could you read the next paragraph, please? Okay, no problem. There is a range of scientific opinion about exact conver uh, conversion uh, ratio, but most fishers, uh, fisheries experts agree that the process of raising salmon and other uh, carnivorous spe species consumes considerable considerable more fish uh, protein than it produces adding more pressure on over ex, uh, expo uh, ex exploited exploited ocean fish populations okay great uh, excellent job considerably considerably more considerably and, considerably and then more. Uh, over exploited exploited ex exploited ex perfect exploited. yeah all right, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to just stop reading here and uh, I would like to just ask people for their personal reaction to what we've read so far. And so we talk about fish farming being good, being helpful, um, but so far we have read that fish farming of species that require fish protein, fish meal, or fish oil have a negative impact. And so 
you can please uh, comment on the material that's in the article or your own personal uh, reaction. And so, um, actually, if, if I can uh, get... Uh, Ahmad, could you start, please, by uh, giving yeah, me a personal sure. reaction? Yeah, I think if uh, it's, it really makes sense that we rising uh, uh, we rising uh, carnivores uh, fish and wasting uh, some um, uh, some other species, but I think when we eat uh, as usual, we as a human eat uh, parts of the fish, not all of it. So if we can feed our waste uh, of, uh, of meals uh, to this fish fishes, it will be very it will be very fine. But right, otherwise, yeah. if we are catching another species to to raise this kind of, uh, of food, uh, I think it's not it's not uh, working and it's not good. Yeah, well, it doesn't sound sustainable, uh, and you, you explain that very well. Uh, Emmanuel, uh, do you have a, a reaction? Uh, yeah, so, um, to me, um, raising carnivorous fishes in farms is not a good option, because uh, it will be, it will, uh, by doing this, uh, there will be a waste of uh, fishes, as, um, given that carnivorous uh, fishes requires fishes in the meals, so it's not a, it would be it won't be good for 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 the white animals for the ocean, for the, the sea white animals. Yeah, right. Okay, great. And uh, Ismail, do you have a, a reaction? Yes, Jeff. At the beginning, uh, I learned that uh, the aqua farming is a best solution for high fish demand in the world. But uh, when we go further, uh, I learned that uh, it's uh, not uh, a solution for the uh, high fish demand uh, in the world because we have uh, to kill some uh, fish species to feed the uh, farming fish species and the farm species uh, it's uh, not uh, a good solution for a uh, balance of the environment for a, a sustainable uh, fish <laughs> uh, culture. Yeah, or, or industry, yeah. Yes. No, no, excellent, wow, uh, fantastic job. All three of you have expressed yourself using your own words. That's fantastic. Uh, Joan, a, a, a reaction or comment from you? Yeah, I, I I am not a, uh, I am not a, an expert, but uh, I think that is um, farming fish are, are a good solution um, for for the people um, uh, can can eat fish uh, in a, in, a, in a cheaper in a cheaper way. At the end, uh, the problem is economical. It's, it's, it's cheaper than than fish wild than, uh, than, than wild fish. Than, than coach, uh, no catch uh, will will fish. It's, it's true that um, in farming fish, uh, fish eat um, protein, flesh, uh, not flesh, uh, meat. Yes. Mm -hmm. meat uh, an oil of fish, and we we have to to balance uh, extraction of of uh, of uh, sea and and uh, and uh, you know to 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 be able to 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 conserve uh, fish in, in the sea. Okay, no, great, excellent. <laughs> no, no, you said that perfectly. Now, just two things, John. You, it's very important to use headphones or earphones, and also uh, Diego put some information in the burbling chat box for you. 
Please uh, look for the message. Uh, uh, okay, okay. But, but Diego wrote in Spanish the instructions for closing the verbling window. You, you still okay, have okay. the echo in the background. Okay, it so, is better uh, you know, in the huh? Yes, and uh, please okay, okay, read, read the information that's typed in the verbling chat box. Okay, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Julissa, uh, a comment from you, please? Yes, uh, well, first, there is a problem of the increasing demand for seafood, and I think one of the solutions for this problem was the was to start the agriculture no <laughs> the aquaculture industry but now yeah. the problem comes with the uh, raising of her carnivorous animals they, what's the word carnivorous animals yes carnivorous uh, animals absolutely yeah. so yeah. i think maybe maybe a solution could be that instead of being um, raising herbivores Carnivorous and uh, yeah. seafood. Well, and, and we, we often say to avoid those words, we say yeah. meat, meat eating or meat plant eating. eating. Yeah. Maybe uh, the aquaculture industry should focus on, race, on raising the plant eating uh, <laughs> seafood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, or maybe they could have a special pools to raise the. Uh, Fish that will be the food for the herbivorous ones. Ah, so good. They, yeah, so then they, they don't need to go to the sea yeah. to, to bring or to catch That's other right. species. Yeah. If, if the feeder species are plant eaters, uh -huh. so they can raise the feed species by feeding them plants right. and then feed the fish to the, the salmon, for example. <laughs> okay, yeah. great, excellent. Fantastic job, everybody. You're just like, your English is wonderful. And uh, Feng Ho, hello. How are you? <laughs> Feng Ho. Please. Yeah, I'm here. Can yes, you hello. Me? Welcome. Welcome. Thank yes, you. we can. Thank you so much. <laughs> no. and, and your so, sound is excellent. Please introduce yourself. Where are you calling from? Okay, I'm Phương Ho. I'm from Vietnam. This is the first time I'm, I'm joining this uh, uh, your lecture, and so wonderful. I connect you. <laughs> okay, no good. And so, is fish farming popular in Vietnam? Is it common? Yeah, fish farming is very uh, popular in Vietnam, and you, you know, I l I love seafood so much. I can eat anywhere, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And and so, uh, it, but fish. You're you're usually eating fish or other types of seafood. Yes, I usually eat food and some some uh, other kinds of uh, fish. Okay. No, oh, great. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, I'd like to uh, say hello to uh, Suparat. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself. Where Where are you calling from? Oh yeah, I'm calling from Thailand. Mm. Yeah, but my nickname is Boat. You guys can call me Boat. Boat. B O A T. Boat. Yep. Oh, okay, Boat. Excellent. And so, uh, do you eat a lot of seafood? Yeah, I I I eat a lot about seafood. I like to eat shrimp. Yep, and about shell. My favorite okay, food is seafood, yep. Great, okay. And uh, I, I'm uh, going to move on. So, uh, so uh, uh, where, where are that? Are you there? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, uh, could you share with us your reaction to the article so far? Uh, sorry? Could you share your ideas or opinions? About the article. P article. Uh, about our topic. Hmm. I just I just came to oh, to to, okay. to last minute. I don't oh, I don't know fine. all of them. That's fine. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And uh, I'll I'll just say hello to Enrique. Enrique, hello. Enrique, you need to turn on your microphone. 
Hello. Hey, we, uh, hello, uh, Enrique. Hello. Can you hear me? What? Yes. Yes. Hello. Now, uh, now you uh, have, you an, have echo an echo problem. problem. So you so need you to need use to headphones use or earphones. Or earphones. And, and, uh, or you also you need to close the burbling.com window. window. I'll, I'll, I'll come back, come to, you back later. to you later. Let me try. All right, let's continue with our reading. And so uh, I believe it's, it's your turn, uh, Emmanuel. And so here we go. Uh, Sorry, Emmanuel. Sorry, Emmanuel, you... Emmanuel, could you uh, continue with our reading here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, great. Sorry, let me let me bring it up on the screen. There we are. Uh, okay. Some scientists working with the aquaculture industry argue that raising carnivores has not increased the total volume of fish being officially targeted for producing fish meal and oil products, which are also used to feed swine uh, in brackets pigs and poultry in brackets chickens. Yeah, now swine always refers to pigs and poultry are the birds similar to chickens. And so chickens and turkey, for example. All right. So, and, and just could you repeat the point that the, the people are making there, Emmanuel? Sorry, sorry. What could you please uh, repeat the information that was in that paragraph? Uh, yeah, um, here uh, the paragraph is about uh, the work that uh, the aquaculture industry um, does. So I don't know if. Uh, oh, okay, and then just specifically the information that's in that paragraph. What are the aquaculture industry people saying? And anyone can help. I just want to make sure that the that people understand the point here. I think they are just yes thinking of using chickens or or kind of pig. To feed uh, the carnivores uh, fishes or, or species. Oh, oh. Okay, now that's now that's very possible, uh, Ahmad. Thank you, but I, I'm sorry that's not really the information in the paragraph. But thank you so much. Now, someone, someone else, uh, I'll help you, and, and I love it when students participate and share their ideas. What was the question? Yes, Sorry. Jul Julissa, the what information, the yeah, what, what's the point? What's the information that was communicated in that last paragraph? Mm -hmm. some, some scientists working with the aquaculture industry argue mm -hmm. that raising carnivores or carnivorous fish has not increased the total volume of fish being uh, officially targeted or harvested for producing fish meal and oil products because farmers have always used fish meal and fish oil products to feed pigs and chickens. So, can, does, does so that, uh, yeah? I think it's clear uh, that uh, they argue that uh, we already used uh, fish meal and oil products to feed pig and chicken. So if we use uh, this, this the same uh, uh, fish meal and oil products to feed carnivores, it will never affect the total uh, right. volume of our uh, consuming. No, good. So they're saying that raising fish has not really increased the amount of 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 small species that are being. Uh, harvested or caught. Okay, all right. So one argument uh, for the fish producing industry. Okay, but let's let's move over, uh, move on to this here. And so uh, I think we are with uh, Ismail. Could you please read this paragraph for us, Ismail? Yes, Jeff. 
However, they acknowledge that the percentage used for aqua feeds is steadily growing and at the current growth rate, the aquaculture industry will require volumes in excess of what the oceans can sustain. At the current growth rate of the industrial sector, farming carnivorous fish species, the United Nations FAO reports that fish population targeted for fish oil could be depleted by 2050. Okay, and just the pronunciation of steadily, steadily growing. Steadily okay. growing. Okay, so the situation currently might not be a huge problem, but aqua farming or aquaculture is the fastest growing food industry in the world. And so the United Nations. Um, maybe that's fisheries and oceans, I, I'm not sure. Uh, they're saying that really uh, this will not be sustainable for more than just a few years. Okay, great. And so uh, let's, let's move on to the next one. So, uh, Joan, uh, let's, let's bring up the next paragraph yeah, yeah. here. Uh, this this next short paragraph, please. Um, okay, okay. Uh, fish meal resources could be deplete, depleted by 2030. There is new evidence uh, in some regions that biomass fisheries, which capture ocean fish for fish meal, have begun to destabilize the marine food web with uh, negative impacts on marine wildlife. Marine. Marine, marine, we like and bio, biomass. Okay, thank you. Biomass. Yeah. Okay, great. And then the marine food web. P uh, could someone please explain what the uh, marine food web is? Mm. Joan, do you do you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. they're talking the, the, about? The, the the marine food web uh, is. Uh, the, the, the whole food uh, in, in, on the sea. Right. So the interconnection between different species. Okay, see. Yeah, and, and we also say in English the food chain. I put that in the verbling chat box. Okay, the food chain. All right, great. And thank you, Joan. You, you've eliminated your echo. <laughs> good, good work. <laughs> yes, Isma. Jeff, uh, what does biomass fisheries ah. mean? Yeah, now uh, this, I, I guess what they're just talking about is they're not catching fish for meat that is edible. It's just simply they want a biological mass of animals. And so they, they're just simply catching volumes of living things. Does that make sense? Yes. Well, okay, so just simply they want to catch two tons of living creatures. It, it doesn't, it's, they're not trying to produce meat for human consumption. They just want protein. They just want um, a huge amount of living organisms to turn into feed. Okay, and so uh, uh, Julissa, could you read this next uh, paragraph for us please? Yes. There are also food safety issues. Increasing levels of ocean pollution have begun to contaminate different types of seafood like tuna and sword fish with dangerous levels of mercury. Okay, great. And just uh, the W in sword is silent. We do not pronounce the W. Sword. Swordfish. Okay, and people are uh, familiar with mercury. Okay, it's a, a metal that is liquid at room temperature. 
Okay, and just if people could keep their microphones muted, please. We're, we're getting some background noise. And uh, I, I hope that I have uh, some pictures here. So this is a tuna. And unfortunately, they're showing an, an accumulation of mercury. Uh, mercury is one of the toxins, uh, a toxic metal that accumulates over time. The levels continue to build up and build up over time, especially in these large animals. That's a, a swordfish. And could you read this, please, Julissa? Okay. Pollution has also resulted in the contamination of fish milk and fish oil with PCBs and dioxins, which are known to cause cancer. These toxins tend to bioaccumulate at more dangerous levels in the fatty tissues of fish that are, high, that are higher on the marine food chain. Fish that eat other carnivorous fish. Okay, great. And here's a, a photograph of some salmon. Okay. And so, right, now uh, you can investigate some of these things individually, but PCBs and dioxins, I know, are one source is the pulp and paper industry. Uh, I know that that has been an issue in Canada the factories that produce paper uh, are releasing these some of these dioxins and PCBs into the water. All right, and so I'd like to go on to uh, Feng Ho. Could you please read this paragraph for us? Feng Ho, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. sir. I, I, I can't see the, the article. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, you can download the article from the yeah, burbling.com website. Yes, okay. It, it's called File GW38. See, see if you can and do that. And, and uh, I'll move could, on could to you, could uh, you both. Please repeat that. Oh. Yes, I put the name of the file in the Verbling chat box. Yeah. Okay, let me, go see. To let me see. Verbling.com website, live classes page, and the information for this class. Okay, and, and thank you. I, I'm going to move on to Boat. Uh, could you read this paragraph for us? Boat, yep. are you there? Yeah, oh, yep. great. Uh, yeah. The results of the comprehensive sampling of the farm and real salmon products in supermarkets across the United States and Europe has shown a much higher concentration of PCBs and dioxins yeah. in, in farm salmon. This is party, partly because why salmon naturally forage on the variety of marine life over a large area, much of which is lower on the marine food chain. Okay, great. Hi, 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 mister. I want to read uh, this paragraph. Okay, uh, I will come to you uh, later, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I read. No, no I, I, will, I will come to you later, sir. Thank you. And, and so uh, just the, the idea with this is they're showing higher levels of these toxins in the farmed fish. All right. And so really uh, we're, we're out of time. And so uh, what, what I'll have to do is uh, end, end our class there. Uh, I'm sorry to everyone who's joining the class later. And just if I can uh, finish the class, and I'll, I'll just talk to the students who have joined. So uh, we, are, we are ending this class now, uh, but thank you so much to the students who have participated, and I hope that you found this information uh, interesting. If, if 
Thank you very much. Could please, thank you very much. Could thank you very much, please, Master. Thank yeah, you very much. yeah, thank you. And uh, thank I'm you sorry so to the other students. And so, um, hello. Uh, sorry, uh, Harz, are you there? Harz? Thanks, Mister. Yes, yeah. So please welcome, uh, and and I hope that you can join one of my other classes in in the future. Yes, yes. Thanks. I'll I'll, I'll be teaching in an hour. Nice and, to meet you. Uh, yeah, great. And Juan Sebastian, are you there? Juan Sebastian, are you there? So you need to learn how to turn on and off your microphone, to mute and turn on your microphone. On the Google Hangout screen, there is an image or icon of the microphone. No, no, it's uh, it's active. The microphone of uh, John, uh, Mister. It is it is? Yeah. Uh, so we, we don't active. hear you. We don't hear you, Juan Sebastian. I, I'm sorry. Okay, and so all all the best to you. Uh, good luck with joining the next class. Hi, Liz. Good luck, teacher. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank Thank you. Great, Thank you, great smile. Liz, are you there? Okay, I, I'm going to end the class. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.